Okay, hello and welcome back to our accelerometer lesson for PIC microcontroller uh, construction and programming. Uh, now we're going to be taking a look here in part two uh, at the at the code for the PIC microcontroller that we're going to be using. Um, well again, we're, we've got our got our hardware set up. So I've um, got our accelerometer and our RS-232 communication. So let's go ahead and take a look at the program, shall we? So now in MP Labs, what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, our chip we've got our PIC 16F886 chip, uh, got our normal fuses, delay clock, and then our RS-232 communication statement. I've defined a, defined a couple uh, couple pin, the couple pins, the B7 and B6 for x-axis and y-axis, just for simplification of coding. Gone down here and set our tri-state registers because remember we got to uh, set those uh, set up our tri-state registers for port B since we're we're inputting some data in so we've got basically ports 6 and 7 as stated as inputs the rest of them out um, and then here's where we get going we got some variable declaration and then we've got an infinite for loop so we can just you know roll through this and it just keeps printing stuff out now what we're gonna do is we're going to check and see how long this statement what it does is it's going to check the x-axis and it's going to have it's going to have a counter and what it's going to do is it's going to count and see how long in 100 millis 100 microseconds excuse me 100 microsecond intervals it's going to count how many intervals of 100 microseconds it takes before we basically drop off to a zero is basically what this is going to do. So essentially while the PWM wave is high, um, we're going to be counting. We're going to count and wait and see for see how long it, that is. Then the minute it goes low, basically comes to the bottom of the cycle, then we're going to break out of this and we're going to wait. We're going to wait to finish a complete cycle. We're going to wait till it comes back high again. Then we're going to set our Y count to zero and then we're going to have a while, another while, and this is going to be for the Y statement. So basically, when it first comes in, it's going to wait for that. It's going to get that because when everything first powers up, the wave is going to go go high, and our chip's going to catch it. We're going to wait for it to go low. You know, basically the the width of that square wave. We're going to wait for that to go low, and then once it does, we'll stop counting, and then that way we'll have a count of how long it took. Then we're going to wait. Uh, just in case the Y didn't quite finish or the PWM wave is maybe in between you're basically like so we don't catch the PDM, PWM wave in the middle of its cycle or something like that we're basically going to wait for one more cycle um, because the parallax uh, it keeps producing that PDW, PWM wave that it doesn't like ever go away so what we're going to do is we'll just wait for one more cycle no big deal um, not a huge timing issue. Wait for one more cycle, and then we'll begin checking. The minute it goes um, goes back high, basically, we'll start we'll start the the Y counter, and we'll start counting the Ys. And so that's kind of how uh, that works. So now we're gonna we'll we'll wait for the Y. And do the same thing. Um, count the Y, and then what we're gonna do is then we're gonna decide what we're gonna do to print. So. First of all, we have what we do is basically we, we wait and see if something has changed. So we have the old. That's what this old variable is for. Is um, now first time through the old variable will be zero. So it'll obviously be a new one. But basically, while it's setting still, you want to check to see if it's it's just printing the same number. You know, if it's basically measuring the same time. Well, you don't need to print that to the screen again. You can just you can just wait till it changes till someone jostles it or you know you you twist it or move the accelerometer around and so that's what that's what this little if statement does and so then uh, basically if it does move if it's not equal then it's going to print print it to the screen print the X and the Y to the screen it'll say X equals and then it'll be the X value and the Y value otherwise it's going to check the uh, Y value you know basically you have the X and the Y that you have to check so it's going to check both of them and print them to the screen and then it'll update the this uh, old variable it'll update it with the new one and then we're going to wait on the X again. We're going to see, you know, where it is because during all of this, um, you know, it could have, we could be in the middle of a cycle or something. So we're going to wait again for the beginning of a new cycle. And that's what these two while loops do. So we're going to wait for the beginning of a cycle. And then once we reach it, then we're going to set the counter equal to zero and start counting again on the X. And then we're just going to do this over and over and over. 
So fairly simple, fairly straightforward. All you have to do is just basically break down that PDO, PWM wave, that pulse width modulated waveform, and um, you know just basically catch it, capture when it's trans transitioning. And there's actually some other videos on YouTube. I, I may include a link or so to them. I've seen other videos on YouTube that um, of people actually hooking this up to a, a scope, to a oscilloscope and showing you what the PWM wave actually looks like and how it changes as you move the accelerometer. Um, I, may, I may make a video of that. Um, I'll have to crack my oscilloscope out of mothballs, but um, uh, it's been packed away for a while, so I'll have to get it out. But um, I could take and maybe show a video of that too, but uh, there's a real good one that's on uh, YouTube. If you just uh, search for the Memzik 2125 accelerometer, you should be able to find that video, and it's very, very helpful to be able to see what your chip's actually seeing. So that's basically that's basically it. Um, fairly simple, straightforward programming. Um, just capturing that wave and basically pulling it apart and finding out what the uh, what the timing is in it. And that's basically it. I'm going to I do have this actually set up on a breadboard and actually put together. So I will show a physical demo of this, as well as I created some software using Visual Studio, and I will go through that software as well to kind of show you some tips and tricks. Those of you, I got a lot of responses on the last video that I did for the RS-232 demo, um, except I was just, I think in that one, I was just outputting uh, basically some information from the PC to the chip. So this time we'll be reading it in. So you'll get to see the different uh, Visual Basic functions for um, ser reading serial information in. So you can stay tuned for that. That'll be the next video I'll do. So subscribe comment let me know if any of this was too confusing or if I went too fast I know we 12 minutes is uh, pretty tight for me to keep in all the information that I have to give you guys but it so if you have any questions please comment um, subscribe um, I do appreciate all the subscriptions I do enjoy doing this very much so glad you guys enjoy it too so I'll see you in the next video when we uh, do the physical demonstration thank you